it was very, very icy on the main stage just moments ago. Frostbite took and connecting. Uh, they actually disconnected them, unfortunately, from the tournament. A big first map from the boys in blue on Aquarius CTF, where they quickly showed how efficient they were capping back-to-back -back flags. Uh, CTF, they were looking pretty good, but it continued on. And uh, despite a little pushback from connecting, they actually managed to finish Street Slayer as well pretty evenly. Uh, they pushed the lead, uh, and unfortunately for connecting, things just got worse from there. Uh, this team took the dub. I, I gotta say, Frostbite looking pretty good, and I gotta say, a very confident crossman coming in on the desk. Uh, and an also impressive gameplay coming out of them. Really heads up as well, pushing the ball out of play on back ramp, bringing things back into mid, throwing the ball as well, bottom mid. Uh, and unfortunately, it was a little bit of a game over one situation there in the series. But incredible stuff, 3-0 across the board, full frostbite. And it brings us on to our next series as well. And Gus has got a little cheeky smile on his face. There's a man in a banana suit over there. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just <laughs> it's hard laugh. not to look. Welcome it? to DreamHack, where anything uh, can happen. Yeah. Sorry, I've seen some questionable <laughs> shirts today. One of them cannot be repeated on broadcast, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, love it. Well, this is the time where I now turn the tables to uh, professionalism and talk about our expectations of the series. Uh, and we will be actually seeing uh, Vexed versus Diamond Dogs happening on the main stage. Uh, Vexed we've seen play before, as well as Diamond Dogs on day number one, of course. And, you know, this is going to be an interesting match, but I think it will be slightly one-sided. Looking at Vex, though, you know, we know what these guys are capable of. And I think when they are on point, they can do some pretty good things. But Lethal, you know, I think sometimes they can get a little bit rusty. They can get a little bit stuck in their old ways. And I think they need to adapt just a little bit more to hit that next level, I think, of gameplay. Yeah, when I saw Vexed earlier, I was quite impressed with their coordination and how they pinched their opponents, especially in some of the Slayer game types. But it just seems very slow. And I think that's what you mean by Vusty, because sometimes yeah. they're like, mm, shall we go in? Yeah, go on in. And it's like they second guess themselves sometimes. But they've got high expectations. Looney even said earlier, you know, we want to try and get top six, top four. Um, is that realistic? Potentially. But the only problem is now is the fact that they need to speed up the collapsing and methods and how they push the objective. They need to be much faster. And for Warlord as well, especially, he's someone where, don't get me wrong, in the slaying department, great, brilliant. But he needs to con sorry, contribute a little bit more damage to help his teammate get across the map, because now and again, it is debatable with some of the plays it makes, but also at the same time, it's also not so bad. So it's kind of like half and half. It can be a little bit hit and miss. But Lumi, with the addition, I think it's a great addition for me. I think it kind of suits their style and the way they play, but we need to speed things up a bit in terms of their collapsing. Yeah, we certainly do. I got to say, you know, a big standout for me in the Witchblade series that we saw Vex play was Looney. Looney was kind of popping off in that final map as well. And Stronghold's recharge, uh, he had fantastic stats coming across the board, sword in hand. He looked like he was someone from Elden Ring at one time until he put the grappler. And I was like, oh, hold on, it's Halo Infinite. Uh, but looking absolutely amazing. And I think, you know, we've seen a VT of him before talking about Lumi. And I think Lumi just kind of adds that effect that they needed. We kind of talked about it on the desk before as well on set about how they needed that impactful player. Based on what we saw going up against Witchblaze, do you feel like Looney is that guy? Uh, Looney's a very interesting player for me. I've always enjoyed watching him because he's always playing the game where he's trying... I always say this and it sounds very dumb, right? Which is he's playing the way in a way to win the game. He's never thinking about a plus one just to add a little kill to his stats. He's always thinking about what needs to be done in order to get the dub. And I've always respected him for that because in these kind of teams, a lot of the time you'll see you know, a couple of players who may be younger players looking for a stepping stone up to a, an opportunity, a big team. And, and when they get to this position, they get to a LAN environment, they kind of play a little bit differently because they know there's people watching and they want to have impressive performances statistically. I, I think that Looney just, he just wants to win games at Halo. And I think a lot of players who are actually up and coming players can learn a lot from him because when you get to these environments, you need players like Looney on your team to win games. And I'm impressed because Looney's been able to stay alongside Warlord for about nine years now. And that is wow. a difficult task to do. <laughs> Stu <laughs> is a difficult human being to try and tame when it comes to in-game Halo. But I tell you what, they are a duo that is very formidable in Halo Infinite. And they are scary enough to not just contest for top eight, but I do believe them that they have a chance at top six. Granted, I think their bracket is going to be very difficult because Online Warriors are on that same side. But this is now the bare minimum. They have to achieve top eight. This is their expectations, but it's also where they need to be finishing. And you're talking about nine years that he's been teaming with Warlord, but Warlord, he needs to take a day off, I think, because I, I believe he's actually the number one in terms of ranked gameplay for the amount of gameplay he has played. I mean, that is just And the insane. amount of kills. And the amount of kills as well. By, by about 4K, I think. Wow. Over above, yeah. above anyone yeah. else. He well, is, I mean, he's played a lot of matches. He enjoys Halo Infinite. Sheer time. I've got to say the... Uh, 
He might need to get a new gaming chair. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that, that one's going to be comfy. That one's going to have the grooves yeah. and everything. I'm just yeah, saying, that, I wouldn't be throwing that one away. <laughs> that one's definitely been uh, worn in, for sure. Uh, let's switch the focus right now, though, to Diamond Dogs on the other side of the stage. Uh, they played Na'Vi yesterday. It was a swift 3-0. and Obviously not the best performance out of these guys. But, Lethal, what can we expect out of them right now? Going up against Vex Gaming, I feel like a, a better contender for them. You know, what do they need to produce in order to take down Vex? Well, speaking to Boaz earlier, when they went into the first round of loser bracket, they were really disappointed, really down on themselves, very demoralized. And I thought to myself, the way he was acting, I was like, maybe that's it. Maybe that's them done. Maybe they're only going to come top 16, that's it, one and done. But the only problem is now is the fact that they've actually got this far. And I think they're feeling a little bit more comfortable with themselves. And I think they're kind of adjusting to the offline environment once more. We saw Blizz as well. He's been putting on some stats. I know he's a bit of a stat himself anyway, but it's <laughs> nice to see if he's actually been able to display that in an offline environment once again. And then we need to see a little bit more of that as well. So this team could be really good and could be a detriment and actually be a little bit of fawn of Vex. But the problem is the fact that if it's the same as what we saw earlier on main stage, then it's going to cause a real uh, ton of concern. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think they're going to have to really bring the best out of themselves on this main stage. Of course, their tournament life is on the line. This is a big series for them if they want to continue this and try and break that ceiling of top eight as well. Uh, but it's, it's really important as well, I think, the series layout to see how this one is going to go for both of the teams. Let's take a quick peek at it. Uh, we are kicking things off with King of the Hill on streets. Uh, so King of the Hill obviously being one of the brand new additions into the game. Uh, kind of something that we've seen from many iterations of Halo, but a little bit of a spin on this one coming into Infinite. How do you think our team's going to perform in this one, Gaskin? I think Vex are going to perform very well. Uh, I think they are one of these teams that, you know, play a lot of matchmaking. They practice a lot. They have put in the time into the game. And even though Lumiza is a new addition, they instantly click, they instantly gel. That's what they've been saying. So I think all of the beliefs and tries and tribulations that they go through in Halo Infinite will be naturally assessed by Lumi and they'll be able to bring him into the same ways that he likes to play. Also, looks like a really exciting series layout. We've not seen much Catalyst Cap to the flag today. So I think this is gonna be a really fun series to watch. I think the Diamond Dogs will struggle a little bit, but they've come back from a situation where they lost to an open team in pool play, had to battle through the elimination bracket, have now outplaced that same open team in connecting, and now they have the chance to try and place top eight. Yeah, they do have uh, quite a big chance on their hands here as well. I want to talk about head-to-head -head really quickly and see exactly what our teams are coming up against. We've got Lumi and Hybrid here. Um, interesting in terms of stats because Lumi obviously being that super, super young gun, that shining star that they're hoping to be able to kind of take control of but also make a huge impact here in his gameplay. And on set, compared to Hybrid, how dangerous would you say Lumi is when you're looking at the two? I feel like the two play styles of the two players are very different as well. That's one thing to point out here. I think Hybrid's a very aggressive slayer. He likes to take 1v1s. He likes to get, it, you know, take the first fight that he can find. Whereas Lumi's a little bit of a slower pace. And amazingly, it seems like his KD actually changed on the fly there. So he's just under one. But I think if he wants to impress and he wants to go up against some of these bigger teams, and with the play style that he has, he needs to bump that up a little bit. Because I think he plays kind of an anchor role alongside War Warlord for this team. And with Looney ahead of him, kind of engaging a lot of battles, you've got to clean up the damage he's doing. Hey, you do indeed. I, I've got to say, stats flying across the screen there as well. But Lumi, obviously, look at him. He's zoned in. I've got to say, I do love the uh, rugby shirt type Vex effect. Shirts are right? Sick. Yeah, I do They're like They're pretty them. cool. They are pretty cool. Big I've got to say, I, I'm a big fan of the shirts as well. I think it's going to be a. Uh, Maybe it's going to be a game changer in the series. Who knows? Maybe, maybe Shazzy will get like a Warlord wig next time so he can get another <laughs> oh, free yeah. shirt. Maybe that's what I, I mean, mean, I feel like the wig he already has could just be dyed and then we honestly could be on the money there. Yeah. I think so. Also, uh, excuse my ignorance, but do we have twins on the Diamond Dogs? I hadn't actually seen any of their, right? their pictures, but Boaz and Kea, they look pretty Identical. similar if they are not brothers. Uh, so maybe they're going to get a little bit, you know, of the, old, loves a twin. the old classic twinage that we've seen so much in Halo, and they might have a little bit of extra communication. And I like they've gone for different names. It's not the traditional, ooh, Shirzy 1, Shirzy 2, you know? They've gone for something a little bit new <laughs> and original. They have indeed. I've got to say, they do look pretty much identical. Uh, so it would be kind of crazy if they were twins. Imagine if they were just completely unrelated. Yeah. I mean, that would be insane. pretty mad. That would be pretty nuts, wouldn't it? Uh, what is going to be nuts, though, is the fact that I get to ask you for the last time uh, what your predictions are going to be on the series. So the last you. time ever? Um, not ever. No, not ever. Sorry I've avoided that. predictions forever. <laughs> I know, I know. But who are you going with? Uh, I think Vexed. Do I have to give a scoreline? No, no, you don't, but okay, you can. 3-0. Cool. Uh, oh, OK, he's done it. He's done the deal. Uh, on set. Vexed in some style. I think that they'll win this one 3-0, 3-1. You love that kind of ending on it, don't you? In some way, in some style. 
Um, uh, that Open made ended. more sense than the, my last prediction, to be fair. That, the previous one was not good. I can agree with Although that. No, Navi did win, so it wasn't very that true, Very true. I'm just going to say the same as you go. Vex 3 0, honesty and squash. You get Larry on the stage and then I'm happy. Get Larry! <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's all I want. I don't ask for much, but... <laughs> we, want, we want Squashy to get Larry, Larry. on the, on the oh, stage. Yeah. Larry. Okay. Larry. Uh, I'll tell you, some, somebody who's going to get Larry in the booth, actually two people who will get Larry in the booth, is actually going to be our two casters. We have Clutch and Shirzy on the mics. Gents, for the last time tonight, it's over to you guys. Thanks so much, Lottie. I don't know about Larry, but I'm definitely hairy. That much is for sure. Look at this now. Vex gaming up against Diamond Dogs. Last game of the night, Wes. For Vex Gaming, it's about getting top eight. That's exactly where they predicted to be. And for Diamond Dogs, they went 0 and 4 in pools. This is their chance for redemption. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think Diamond Dogs would get this far. I'm not sure they did after their Friday. So it's a good thing to see them again. That means they're playing much better. And on the side of Vex, you have a lot of expectations having the opportunity to talk to them earlier this week. This is definitely something that is expected as a win. So no surprise to see the guys all predict Vex to take this one, even as excited as Dan did get about the Twins. He does love the Twins. He loves Twins. Open series have been top eight finishes for Vex Gaming all the live long day. That's their bread and butter. They've been struggling to push past that. So we expect them to push on here. That's perhaps why we have gotten those three zero predictions because Diamond Dogs have their work cut out for them. And with the way their form has gone thus far, they have not been impressive. No, but they still are in the tournament. So there's still a story to be written. There's still a future to behold. And there's a reason you play the game, shares. And that is an opportunity, and the only opportunity the Diamond Dogs need to prove everybody wrong about this series and how it's going to go. Vex, they looked strong earlier today. So they're going to have to shut Lumi down if they want to take this one. It's live or die, then. Lose this, you go home, you are eliminated. You get the win, you push into that top eight situation. It's all to do here, though, for Diamond Dogs. They are the underdogs here. They need to start hot and heavy. Get those kills quick and really put Vex Gaming on the back foot. It's hybrid in a 1v2 and you lose them most of the time. Good positioning by Vex Gaming, good teamwork, but Diamond Dogs do end up trading out the damage successfully after getting that first pick. And as we're hopping on board with Boaz, he's able to find these rockets. If he can put them to use, may be able to get Diamond Dogs this first hill. Lumi highlighted before the game, this is his first land, but same can be said for the Twins and Boaz and Kaya Deb. Now they're looking to right some wrongs of yesterday. The ink is still wet, still time to change the story, the narrative. They have started to score just under a quarter of the way there for the hill, but now Vex Gaming, much like they did against Vex Witchblades, when they break that setup, it can be very difficult to get out. You can almost need an extermination team. They have managed to clear out though. Blizz, the German, is in the hill now. Two down for Vex Gaming, but can Diamond Dogs hold? I was gonna say it's gonna be difficult to push from PD, but that blink from Kaya Deb, although he goes down, did a ton of damage, had a, a whole lot of focus on him, and it allowed Diamond Dogs to retake this hill. Unfortunately, since then, Vex have retaken that, and once again, Diamond Dogs are gonna have to figure out a way to break it successfully. They cleared them out of the hill, but Blaze has walked out without really getting too much time and a, just an open invitation to walk right the way back in. Three dead now. Double kill for Blizz though. He's the last man standing and all this time he's going to be faced with a 1v2. This is free time for Vex Gaming. Tough situation for Blizz, right? He wants to impact this first point. He wants to stop time from going into Vex's favor, but even on a killing spree, it's just not enough. He can't seem to find an opening either. He just keeps getting knocked down to no shield. Hybrid registers his first kill. Kayadev yet to do that though. Rockets for Warlord, picked up, scooped up, and tensions on, bringing them back into Tram. Kayadev has stopped that push for a moment. Half shields with that grenade doing its job just to deny that little bit of space. But here comes Warlord now. Rockets over the shoulder and a stalker rifle to boot. Can Diamond Dog close the distance? Or will they be inviting themselves right into a rocket party? Yeah, and he wants that thrust too. What a power upgrade that would be. Puts the first rocket to use. You think he's going to get thrust? Goes right oh. into it. Mid combat slides, picks up the thrust, uses the thrust. You love to see the plan take form, and that's exactly what War War was planning all along. 150 odd thousand kills in matchmaking. Oh, another one, another one on land. Secured. Another one. DJ Khaled. 1-0, the scoreline. Very close to being 2-0, and Diamond Dogs have got to get a boogie on because they're in trouble. Going down two. 
Numbers advantage in nobody's favor right now. This next set of slay is going to be so important, but it's almost to the point where you give up this hill, you recognize we're down in the fight. We set up for PD. That's exactly what they're doing. First pick goes the way of Diamond Dogs, but it's not for long. It's a 2v2 trade, but they do have map position spawn. Should be in their favor. Yeah, if you're Diamond Dogs, you got to figure out a way to extend this game, right? This game one's flying by. By the time the second point was captured, Blizz only had two deaths. And you've given up two points. You gotta have more deaths than hills you gave up to the enemy team, you would have to think, but on par for that right now. So Dumb Dogs, I wanna see a little bit faster pace, but unfortunately, without the slays, it's difficult to play at that fast pace. Rocket launcher in just under 20. Warlord did secure the last ones for his team. Straight 4v4 in the map, but only for a moment. Squashy gets eliminated. That's two dead. This is the push. Exactly what Diamond Dogs need to close the distance now. They haven't cleared Warlord out of tower though, and they're desperately looking for him, but he's doing a great job of just milking his life as long as he possibly can. And Kayadev gets into another fight, and he loses that one, one and nine for the game. Yeah, you gotta figure out a way to kill Warlord there, because he was able to stay alive for that long, because he was able to get a kill before going down. It's allowed this push from Vex to be so much stronger. What should have been numbers advantage for Diamond Dogs on a collapse on the last player alive, ended up being a 3v3 push where Vex was able to take so much space on the map, you see the best teams in the world, they don't allow that to happen. See Vex heavily leaning over towards Cafe, and that is for good reason. Three dead though, and would not be surprised to see Squashy step out of the hill here, which he does, he obliges, but unfortunately, he's gonna be straight into another Diamond Dog. Remember, Blizz eliminates him with the help of a frag grenade, but now Diamond Dogs need to hold, they need a setup. Blizz with 14 to his name right now, actually leading the lobby, so you know he's getting the slays. What can he do for us? Got to continue at this pace, especially with your team struggling in the objective department. You got to find openings, create openings for the rest of the boys. At some point, you just have to step on the hill and milk as much time and throw the stats away. You disagree. I agree. He gets eliminated eventually. Without being too much of an impact, it must be said. Now, next step in once more. Lumi on that overlook drops down the shield. Down some more damage, 3-0, and this is a long road back. It's a tough one, and it doesn't get any easier because starting this one off down two players, the hill's already controlled by Vex. They've got everybody set up how they want them. Top tower or top balcony is such a strong position, especially paired with that stalker, and we're about to see that player pick it up. And even Lumi's over by the thrust. So even if he's out of position, he's able to pick up that equipment, and he's gonna have a free flank here on Kaya, and this is going to amount to a lot more with that thrust. Just know the headspace that Kai is in, currently sitting at 1 and 14. Every time he gets head to that dead screen, he holds the back button. It tells him exactly where he is, and every single time he desperate to make plays. And every single time his teammates hit that back button when they're dead, they see that 1 and 15 too. Don't think that that goes unnoticed, and those kind of things can trickle down as a toxic mentality. How do you stay locked in when your career is so young, when you got so much to look forward to, but you're trying to make it happen here and now? Trying to conjure up some magic, but it's 3-0 and about to be 4-0 with very little problem. Very, very easy, too easy. It's not a goose, but it's a 1-0 for Vex Gaming. One kill on the side of Diamond Dogs, and you're going to be happy to get the next game going if you're Diamond Dogs. Get that one out of the way. That score got out of hand too quickly. When you go down two points in King of the Hill, it's pretty hard to come back, and it was a very quick 2-0 situation, and at that point, you're kind of like, all right, maybe this isn't our game type, it's not our map mode combo, let's get onto the Slayer and let's make something happen there. Next game, it had so much control in that game. It, all of it. We looked in very little doubt, they had every power weapon, they were controlling the sandbox every single time, and the game gets so much easier when you have the power weapons, you spoke about it so much. More control than Bravo with the car at the villa we were at. <laughs> He was out of control. Looking at the stats then, hybrid 10, or 9 and 13, excuse me. But on the other side, Lumi having another one of those games. Very impressive. 16 kills, 10 deaths, 3 assists. Play 7.0 KDA. We've already touched upon the struggle that Kayadev had, and it shows the damage as well. Everybody on Vex Gaming playing their part here. Over 3K, each of them. And you know when that's happening, everybody's starting to roll. Someone's gonna get the kill, someone's gonna get the rockets, the power weapons. They're gonna end up probably with more. 
it's all about this next roster playing consistently at a high level because they have high hopes, right? It's not top eight they want. They want the top six. You even heard top four come out of their mouths. And we'll see if they're capable of that level of play, but this bodes well. Definitely in cruise control, it would seem. Didn't seem to have to step it up in any way, shape, or form. The game came easy for them. They got a Tesla. They're in cruise control. They're fast asleep, reclining, hopefully getting some rest for Sunday. Not a ton of energy needed so far throughout this series, and not to be disrespectful to the Diamond Dogs, but, I mean, Vex Gaming is a tough pick here in the bracket, but it's about time you played somebody pretty good, and this is who you run into. Elon Musk is at the wheel, possibly, but something Baxter called them as the Bronze Dogs. I don't know if I agree with that. They're a very oh. good squad, but... What we're seeing here now is very difficult to see a way back for them, particularly with how dominant Vex were in the first game. But Slayer Aquarius up next in game two. It's about trying to turn it around and get some momentum. And if you're going to do it, you need a hot start, I think. I think you got to get some momentum going. It's going to be off the back of somebody stepping up and making a play. Give me something. Blizz was trying his best. Ends up going positive in a game that you lose 4-0. to zero. I always scratch my head when things like that happen. But at the end of the day, you still found a way to get kills, and if everybody's doing that, you're going to have a lot more success than you were in game one. So let's hope that individuals step it up over on the Diamond Dogs, because it really is going to come down to who's going to make a play for us, or are we going home tonight? Diamond Dogs need to do a much better job of controlling the sandbox, because they gave it for free in game one. I and mean, when you do it for free, for free, against players like Vex Gaming, the number four that they're holding up. Holding four, yeah, four free. <laughs> that's, that's what the power weapons are. <laughs> well, hopefully they can get their hands on the camouflage, the heat wave. You can already see they've dropped down immediately for the thruster pack. That is something that's in the strategy. Boaz drops back base, getting tagged up just a little bit. Numi registers the first kill, and you talked about fast start. Not looking to go their way just now, but Boaz desperately trying to cling on to his life over in the fridge. He's done so successfully. 2-2 two, two split here, but who has gotten their hands in the camouflage is going to be that man squashy. Map control in the hands of Vex as well with that camo. So although Diamond Dogs are tying this one up, looking a little bit stronger, at least at the start, you have to think that Vex Gaming is in a prime position to potentially get a lead, but good things are happening. Trades are coming through for the Diamond Dogs. They keep this one tied up, and hey, Kaya, you already have as many kills as you did all of last game. Great start for Kaya. Trying to right some of the wrongs from game one. Warlord, though. Back base. Down to just about a quarter shields. One more burst would have gotten the job done. No guns trained on him, though, it must be said. Kaya in another 1v1, and this time doesn't fancy it. And I can understand why. Boaz, positioned in the closet, gets taken down to half shields. Hybrid front base. Such a pack's going to do him the world of good. The kills are getting traded back and forth. This is much better from Diamond Dogs. Yeah, but just as you say that, three go down. And so three for one victory for Vex. And they're going to be able to get map control. So this is where the game is going to take a tilt, you'd have to think, for Vex. Can the Diamond Dogs fight out of this disfavorable position and trade efficiently? That's a big question. Vex Gaiman talking to Shirzy, too. He said Vex play this very simply, but it's very effective. They run in twos. They bait and switch, and they control the sandbox. Diamond Dogs need to shut that down. Squashy and Warlord front base in that too. Great things. Everybody should be doing it at the highest level. And actually, Diamond Dogs doing a phenomenal job without map control to somehow get out of that situation favorably. That's what I'm talking about. More of that, please, from the Diamond Dogs. Wes Clutch, you've heard it here. He's put that in his basket and looking to punch out. Adding it to his cart. 15 to 16 here then. Close to being all tied up, but another camouflage for Warlord. Squashy had it before him. It's three camouflages without reply. Diamond Dogs need to get a grip on it because before you know it, this will get out of control. Yeah, concern of mine is nobody's even shooting Warlord as he's going for it, right? And that's a red flag. Somebody should be keeping track of when that camo is coming up, should be positioning themselves to get that camo themselves. And nobody even paying attention to Warlord as he was able to get it. Now Warlord going to have an advantage here, potentially getting a lot of free damage on players not able to see him. Diamond Dogs for a moment, we're all stuck back base. Putting their kennels, looking to escape here, get off the chains. That they was have big. come out favorably there. It's not often you see a Team Turtle and come out on top. We have seen, though, they've been successful in this current engagement. Boaz soars out top car, locks in a kill. I really like what we saw from Diamond Dogs there. They know they gave up camo, right? So what did they do? They hunkered down in the base, and they looked for the camo player to come to them. 
Camo is not that difficult to see when you slow the game down like that. So if you're not going to get the power-ups, at least you're able to handle it well, and they did a much better job here in game two. One kill game. Diamond Dogs take the lead. This is better from them. Can they maintain it, though? Can they keep applying the pressure? Turn the screw. Hybrid and Boaz in the respawn screen. Ready to get back into the action without a doubt. Claps coming through, then in the closet. Blizz is trying to clear his corners. He sees Squashy down to no shields. That'll be an easy kill for him. Two go their way. Now they're starting to turn and burn. They have the lead. Look at this momentum in the Diamond Dog's favor. A much different story here in game two. Things you'll love to see. And this is exactly how the Diamond Dogs needed to respond here if they want to make this series interesting. They do just that. And for Vex Gaming, you're probably scratching your head like, wait, is this the same team we just played? During all of that, Vex Gaming have managed to tie it up. Do not want to revert back to factory settings for Diamond Dogs. We want to keep seeing what we did in those last engagements. But again, Wes, it's four camouflage without reply. Diamond Dogs, please, it's on the map. Yeah, we got to talk about Looney's performance here. 14, 5, and 8. Oh! And oh narrowly can't get the triple, but does everything before perfectly. 14, 6, and 9 now. Looney, a young superstar. We were talking him up earlier today, and he's repeating a similar dominant performance here on the main stage. Warlord scampers over towards the Dynamo Grenades, but much to his dismay, he recognizes that Blizz has beaten him to the punch. It wouldn't be like a German to get there before you. I know exactly what they like to do on holidays, put the towel down. You can't get yourself a sunbed. I've seen that before. Blizz has done it this time to secure the sizzle sticks for himself. 37 kills, 33 though. It's just starting to slip away from Diamond Dogs. Yeah, well, it's because how dominant Looney is playing here. They need to figure out a way to shut him down. If they can do that, they may be able to just take game two straight up. But as I say, that three go down, and it wasn't really much to do with Looney. In fact, so the rest of Vex Gaming starting to pick it up, starting to realize, hey, these Diamond Dogs aren't quitting yet. Six kill advantage. Lumi has the thruster pack if he so needs it. He chooses to use it, but in the end, his teammate was on hand to get the kill. And now all of a sudden, real breathing space, real distance between these two teams now as we head into the latter stages of this layer. 44, 34 then. What a diamond dog's got the tank. It's starting to turtle once more. They recognize all these kills are super important. Only four more deaths. And they give away, and Looney's walked in for a double kill and a killing spree. He's on a tear. One away from a 20 piece nugget meal for himself. And what a performance he's having for this series to lock in a top eight performance at the very least from Vex. Everything we hear about Looney is starting to be proved true. Bomb Looney, I'm screaming, let me get that final kill. Please. Get the players down to no shields. I want that 20 bomb, but unfortunately, Diamond Dog's just starting to creep back into the conversation. And Maybe they'll take any kill they can get right now. Hybrid's locked in one more, but it's another camouflage. I think that's all of them now for Vex game. And Looney will get eliminated, though. And all of a sudden, squeaky bum time. There's only one kill required for Vex, but now six for Diamond Dogs. Desperately, Vex game would just want to get that one kill. And the Heat Wave is going to do a massive job here as he punches in. Blizz recognizes his numbers up, and he is taken care of. 2-0 series lead for Vex Gaming. Good things towards the end for the dogs. Good things at the start, but just not enough in between the bread to get the job done. It's a 2-0 lead, like you said, for Vex Gaming. And they look to close this one out pretty smoothly as we go to the third. But the Diamond Dogs, at least they competed there in that game, too. They made it interesting. They made it a competitive series. 50-44 is nothing to hang your head at, but one more of those and your tournament lives are over. Life in the old dogs, but just not enough to get the win that they so desperately required to tie up the series. Now they find themselves down very quickly, 2-0. to zero. With a 4-0 in the King of the Hill streets and with 50-44 in the Slayer. There's a look at the stats, Wes. What's jumping off the page? It's got to be Looney, right? The conversation stays true. Nine assists, most on the team. It's the most. Uh, 11's not the least, but it's the most, most in the assists in the kills category. And when you give me a teammate that's doing that, It'll put a big smile on my face. 11.0 <laughs> in the KDA, no doubt putting down damage to boot as well. 4,340. That is about as complete a game you're going to get. Almost takes the most damage as well. That's big. Damage taken, an underrated stat. And Looney having taken so much damage while being able to stay alive with some of the least deaths. 
and able to deal so much damage, acquire so many kills throughout that process. I mean, the stats range through. Looney is playing very, very well. Looney having a monster of a game, too. Seeing some of the kills there. There's a killing spree, double kill, and we thought for a moment he was going to lock in that triple. Just no hesitation for me, right? There is a clear, fluid plan of how I'm going to take down these three players. All I need them to do is just miss one of those shots, and I got a triple to my name. That's a good thought I play. You're seeing high micro mechanical skills there from Looney. That's it, because it's one thing to have the plan, Wes, but to execute it and to do it so flawlessly. Most damage, most kills, most assists. That is a perfect game from Looney. Perfect. As good as it gets, 50 to 44. Vex take it. Wasn't as smooth as game one. Let's see what CTF Catalyst has to offer us, though. And if you're on the side of Diamond Dogs, those camos, they were free for the hands. They were faux free for the hands of Vex. You cannot give up those overshields the same way. Catalyst CTF on the horizon, then. A perfect game for Looney. Will it be a perfect series for Vex Gaming? Diamond Dogs on the ropes and just one killer blow away from elimination. You ever seen Old Yeller? I haven't. Well, I don't want to spoil it for you. I have a feeling it's about a, about about a dog. About a dog, and the oh, dog no. gets taken out back towards the end. And, oh, uh, no. Got a bad feeling that we're going to see something pretty shortly that resembles the end of the movie. I've seen Marley and Me, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's not no, a happy I story. Cried I cried during that movie. I, I, that was a very I upsetting bawled movie. That tears <laughs> when I saw that. I, I bawled like a child. And I will fight most men on this planet. I bawled tears when I saw that movie. If you don't cry at Marley and Me, then perhaps you're dead inside. That's what I'll say. Hey. That movie was powerful. I'll agree. That was a good dog. Emotional. He was a good boy. He was such a good dog. But these diamond dogs haven't showed us too much good. Let's see if something changes before Old Yeller repeats itself. Well, they've been bad dogs. Perhaps they need a couple of treats to turn themselves around. But one thing's for sure, when you're faced with Looney in the kind of form that he's in, he's been formidable. And Overshield has already gone the way of Vex before we blinked. I'm not shocked, but when you're talking about treats, that's what I'm thinking of, right? That's what you need. You need to get the skewer, the sword, the Overshield. Unfortunately, it's probably all in the hands of a Vex Gaming by now. They do not slow down. The pressure is on. Kaya Dev finding a double that was big to try and stall this flag from going anywhere, but you still got Squashy in your base. Still a little sliver of Overshield left to play with. Now they say that it's taken care of. Boaz makes sure that flag won't get too far. Too dead, though. Skewer still in the hands of Warlord, but he recognizes numbers advantage not in his favor. Looking to lock on to Blizz, but won't be any schnitzel this time. He backs down. Reloads the skewer and will attempt to go again now that his teammates are on hand. Collapse in the base and Boaz is in trouble taking down to what it looks to be about half shield. And yes, indeed, two shots in the back will take care of him. He's been dispatched. The spawns have been favorable though for the Diamond Dogs as Warlord and Co. start to run the flag towards him. Recognizing that though, he's gone bottom middle. Warlord's doing such a good job this series of being around power weapons and making sure, if not him, his teammates control them, but he has gotten the benefit of a lot of that power increase. We saw him on streets continuously with Rockets, the Stalker, and it just creates so much opportunity for his team, and you're removing that opportunity from the enemy team. Battle's going down at the base. It's a little chaotic, but it does look like Vex are getting the better of the trades for now. I love that play from Looney, dropping the flag, recognizing that there were some overextensions coming. He's seen that movie play out loads and lots of times before when the flag gets returned and they start a counter cap. Oh, yeah. He recognizes that that's not going to be the situation here. Diamond Dog still struggling to get the return. Looney gets one more touch on it. And with the help of his teammates, he should be able to get punched this one home. Firing a miracle. Grenades come, but they don't come quick enough. We've got four dead. A potential counter cap opportunity. Four dead. They should have an overshield to play with. It's the first power up of the game, it feels. Almost feel like celebrating. Somebody has it. It's a treat to the dogs. Let's see how they respond to getting the first one. Blizz, thank the heavens. You fell in with the overshield spawn. That's Good. the first one in a very long time that you've managed to secure. Good dog. <laughs> and we know Belly Robes disappeared, but they have managed to get a counter cap. They're on the board, 1-1. One, one. Look what an overshield does. Yeah, look at what an overshield does. The counter cap opportunity gives Diamond Dogs everything they need. And I wondered how the objective was going to go, because often we always talk about how some amateur teams typically can stay in the Slayers, right? Not a lot of strategy. Not as much strategy goes into Slayers as they do for the objectives. You love to see Diamond Dogs positively respond to the first cap of the game from Vex Gaming, and they're right back in this one. It's tied up. Now let's see what they can do with the map control they just earned. 
Four dead once more and applying maximum pressure now to the spawners of Vex Game. And Warlord's the first one. They need to get tabs on him and do it quickly because he will no doubt be overextending. A fumble of the flag for Boaz will delay this run just a touch, but the first kill has gone against them. It's Blizz going down, as is his twin brother Kaya. He has to slow, the, slow his roll here and get some kills. This is a good place for, to stop that flag run, right? Put it in a doorway. Hopefully players are near you, but unfortunately, as I say that, you leave it too far behind. You want to stay near the flag if you're going to make that play. He stops looking at it for just a second, gets distracted by the chew toy for just a second. They get the return, and just like a dog, the attention span needs to be there, locked in at all times, if you want to play objective correctly. Kai has dropped that flag. He's gone to look in his base and went, hold on a second, question marks on the top of his head. There's only one player here. He turns around, looks at the flag. There's two of X Gaming on it. They get the double re. Beautiful play from them to make sure this remains all tied up, one to one. As we head now towards the eight minute mark, two members of X Gaming drop down on the overshield. It's Looney, but he's getting absolutely lit up here. And so is Lumazer, but he manages to get the kills, two in their favor. Two dead for Diamond Dogs. The Warlords just spawned back up. Can they now start putting pressure and apply in the right positions now to get a flag pull of their own? That's exactly who you don't want in your base. Looney wreaking havoc so far throughout this series. He's going to use the repulsor wisely there to get that flag a little bit further than it should be. Also takes a solid fight there in the hallway. Doesn't over chow though. Let's his teammate finish the kill. And that's four players coming off respawn for the Diamond Dogs. You can almost guarantee that this is going to be a cap. The top middle run as well. Always high risk, high reward. The squash has gotten it down. Kai Dad was the first player that could be any sort of influence. And he's been taken care of. But now it's about defending your base after the flag cap because we already seen them get counter capped. Yeah, and they do lose a few members on the way too. A cheeky little ledge right here for Squashy. He almost falls off. Claimers back up. But the Diamond Dogs flush him out of the way. And can we see a second counter cap? Is this what they need in order to stay tied in this game? Unfortunately, that flag gets stalled just a little bit, Scherz, and that could be the return coming through. Three dead for Diamond Dogs. Flag this flag will not be successful. Looney dives on it once more. Now they're starting to run one. And it looks as though Diamond Dogs are in no position to play defense. They might have to give this one away as well, and that could be a dagger to their hearts. A dagger to their tournament hope survival. Hybrid taking out the half shields, but Looney is backing himself in every one-on-one -on -one engagement. Yeah, Looney's very confident right now, and on the side of Diamond Dogs, it's a matter of trying to get counter caps, but that's not a recipe for success, right? Every time you're getting a counter cap, typically the other team is always going to be one cap ahead, one step ahead, and they were able to get the return that last time around and actually get a run of their own, and when it rains, it pours overshield in the hands of Looney again. Pretty much for free. Nobody on Diamond Dogs in a position to compete for it. And this is Vex starting to extend their lead. We are back to our regular schedule of programming in which Vex Gaming get power ups and power weapons for free. Diamond Dogs look to change that briefly just a little while ago by securing their first one of what feels like of the series. And then we're seeing the score three to one. But they are now moving a flag and have ambitions of making this just a one cap game. Looney's Look going this. out of bounds. Spider Manning. Around back base. Will he be able to make it there and stop the flag? He's putting damage down, but Hybrid slides in. He's just oh. a fraction too late. And the Repulsor doesn't have the distance. And now we could see a counter cap. Oh, we're going to see a counter cap. This is the perfect run. I want to see him leave it top middle, go through his door. He doesn't actually do that. He's got one grapple left. But the perfect counter cap opportunity, the perfect route from Looney. It wasn't on time to stop the cap, but Vex showing you that they have counter cap opportunities of their own. Absolutely beautiful from Looney. Make that play and look at this. The synergy, they're running another one. The Diamond Dogs desperately trying to stop it. They pull the flag just to delay it, but the numbers advantage have not been their favor. It's a straight 2v2. Hybrid has not got the shield advantage. Looney locks in, but Boaz gets the kill, but he's too far away to be an influence here. He has to do as maximum damage as he possibly can. The Repulsor play to push the flag from Warlord. Can he get the touch? Yes, he can. He secures the fifth and final flag. It's a 3-0 clean sweep. Yeah, and you thought it was going to happen. The guys on the desk thought it was going to happen. Vex knew it was going to happen. They get their top eight placing in for the Diamond Dogs. Maybe not the best performance you probably perceive your team's potential to be, but you'll be satisfied, I think, with top 12. A lot of opportunity in those young kids' careers, but 
you got to focus on the superstars and the up and comers for now, and that's got to be Looney and the performance he just put on. The rest of Vex followed suit. Let's talk about Vex then and their ambitions for the rest of this tournament. We've seen them go to rally. They went through the open and they were able to take down teams like Black Hand. Do you think they can do the same again? Can they push into that top six? That's what they so desperately crave. And when we talked about the bracket as we highlighted the, the pre-show here, and it's a tough draw. You got Online Warriors, a team that honestly, some people probably thought would still be in winner's bracket at this point. That's a tough team to beat, man. That's a lot of individual skill. I mean, dealing with Shady is gonna be a handful of his own, and I know how good Looney has played, but I'd still take Shady 10 out of 10 times on my side. So it's an uphill fight. You're an underdog for sure, but you're definitely still in the fight. And upsets only happen when they're least predicted and the underdogs step up, make plays, and get the job done. So they gotta believe in themselves. I'll say there's a chance, but it's gonna be a difficult one. Dooney, with another fantastic performance. What a series, but you spoke about Warlord briefly at the start of that game, how he was controlling the power weapons. What a performance from him, doing maximum damage for his team as well. And taking a look at the damage, pretty crazy to see Diamond Dogs actually out damage Vex in that game three. They got out capped five to two, but they did more damage. I mean, you're, half of it's probably to the overshield players that they yeah. were just letting giving yeah, up. That's a lot more shield you're having to chew through, but at the end of the day, there are things that you can improve on. There are things that give you hope as like a potential career in, in the future, right? Just keep grinding, keep putting in that time. Nobody's out grinding Warlord, and you're seeing the success he's having. The question I have to ask before I do throw it over to the desk is that you said having the overshield is a lot more shield to chew through. Was that a, a dog reference that you made accidentally, or was it? No, that it was, was intentional. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, that's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. So over to Lottie and the folks to break it down. Thank you so much, gentlemen, and good night to both of you. We'll see you tomorrow. I've got to say, what a solid performance from Vex there on the main stage. And I think just to know as well, the powerhouse coming out of that series has to be Looney. He didn't miss a beat entirely in that series. Uh, from Streets all the way to Catalyst CTF. My goodness me, an Aquarius Slayer, 19 and 11 to his name. And really just making some big power plays. You know, he really saw the gaps there on Catalyst CTF uh, and took advantage of them. We love an outside grapple play onto the other base, getting that counter cap opportunity coming through Gaskin. A game changer like Looney, what can he do for a squad? I think that just having someone who's that confident, regardless of where he's playing, regardless of what he's doing, is going to just provide so much information to the rest of the team because he's pushing into those positions, he's taking those angles, and I mean, just look at this play. I mean, okay, it didn't get them the return, but it got them a counter cap. Just having yeah. the heads-up ability and going for plays like that, taking those risks, you want players like that on your team. You do indeed. He also had a grapple left in the tank there, just in case they pushed the base a little earlier on. He didn't need to use it. He kept it in the tank just in case as well for later. I I've got to say, some heads-up plays coming forward there on set. Vexed overall, what did you notice about them in that series that really didn't allow Diamond Dogs to breathe? They showed a kind of level of ruthlessness that I've wanted to see from them for a while as well. Sometimes, with all due respect to some of the Vex players, we've seen them in series like that before and a game gets dropped and maybe a game's a little bit closer than they should be. Um, but they weren't in that case. They were dominant. And I think even the Slayer Aquarius, even though it was a six kill difference at the end of things, it was still completely in their hands at all times. I never felt like it was going to get into a position where they're going to lose that game. So I think they've just found that with the experience they've picked up now from multiple events that they've worked out how to close out series. They've worked out how to minimize that mistakes and they're looking stronger every time we see them. They certainly are looking stronger. Uh, looking strong right now is Looney on the end of the desk because Looney, my goodness me, what an epic performance from a team, but personally, what an insane individual performance we saw out of you. We've seen it pretty much all day. And before I get into you know, what the team are capable of, what do you feel like you bring to the table? Because we're seeing you kind of main slayer. You're also leading the charge as well. So what kind of player is Looney? Uh, honestly, just a level of maturity. I'm, I'm pretty much teaming with a group of idiots. So I need to try and um, I'm at the adult, surprisingly, and I'm one of the younger ones. So that's just like I said, just maturity. Maturity, I like it. The, ma the mature kind of leader, but also the youngest on the squad as well, which is kind of One of the crazy. youngest. Lumi's the youngest now. He's 18. Lumi, yeah. so Lumi oh, is true, the youngest. True. What, what kind of, what kind of uh, thing does Lumi bring to the team? Obviously, really, really young. We were talking about trying to bring a really impactful player. You seem to be the kind of impact the team needs. So what is Lumi bringing to the table? Oh, I, I think you're giving me too much credit. My, uh, honestly, my team's the best. Uh, Lumi's young. He's hungry. This is his first event as well, so he knows what he's looking for. 
Like Stu, he's experienced. Josh, he's, I can always count on him to make the right plays. So honestly, I'm just trusting my team. I don't do that much. It looks like I do, I don't. <laughs> I promise. It's difficult to trust them. I know yeah. what it's like to have to <laughs> be in a Discord with Warlord, let alone be in a actual oh, game yeah, with him. So, uh, credit to you for doing it for nine years. <laughs> Oh, uh, it looks like Online Warriors will probably be your next opponent, judging by how the bracket's going, if that's going to be your route into top six. What's your thoughts on that? Because that's going to be a tough matchup. Uh, uh, doesn't really matter. I, I don't care who they put in front of me. I'll outshoot them. It doesn't matter what day it is. It doesn't matter who it is. I'm confident enough in me and my team. I love uh, that. that. I love that as well. Yes, I have a question like... about the maturity as well, because I, I'm seeing that in the gameplay as well, not just in what you're saying and what you're, what you're claiming you're the most mature on the team anyway. I'm still not 100% convinced about that <laughs> myself, but I mean, there does seem to be a maturity in your gameplay because previous events, previous years, there's been this kind of a hecticness sometimes about mm. the way that you've played the game. And yeah. I mean, this with all due respect, because I am going to give you a compliment now, which is you slow down a little bit in some of those tense moments and you're making more mature decisions. Is that just a case of experience or is that something you've actively tried to work on? No, that's definitely something I've tried to work on. I, I'll be honest with you, I cost you an idiot, but I, a lot of it goes to him. Like, he's gone through so much stuff with me, um, just one on, even one-on-one, -on -one, and we kind of go through stuff together. So I'm trying to speed him up while he's trying to slow me down. That's kind of like what we, uh, we kind of discussed. Even like, we're playing Halo at like 5 a.m. matchmaking, and we kind of even like randomly just go through theater together, and we, uh, like there's situations where I say, Stuart, you need to speed up here. And Stuart says like, exact opposite for me. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense because every time we go into matchmaking at 4 a.m., it's always Warlord every single time. So it makes sense for matchmakers every single time. Doesn't matter what yeah, year nah. or what day it is, pretty much. But um, what I want to ask as well is that with Vexed overall, you've had a few team changes. You've been uh, trying out different players, and finally, you know, Lumi seems to fit that role or fit that build, mm. so to speak. Even if he plays a little bit slower, does it make the rest of your team play a little bit slower? Because I was mentioning on the desk before where sometimes a bit too slow for my liking. But do you have that moment where you can speed up on the fly? Because against Online Warriors, they're going to be a very aggressive team to compete against. The thing is with Lumi, like, he, he just lays down the damage. I don't, like, some of, like, the Halo Data Hive stats, you see Stuart get, like, 40 more kills him. He gets, like, 5k more damage. Doesn't matter about his pace. As long as he's dealing the damage and everyone's one shot in front of me, I'm, I'm happy no matter no matter what pace he's playing at. Speaking of Lumi, what's the change been like for him? Because obviously you'll have an idea. Because I think he was playing, like, 30 FPS on original Xbox yeah. online, and now he's playing on a PC. It should be 240 hertz. Like, how has that been for him adapting? Has there been any difficulties or has he done it okay? Uh, honestly, he's done it okay. Uh, fun fact, originally we wanted hybrid on our team, um, but uh, he sadly declined. And then we were kind of struggling on who to find, but then we heard Lumi got his PC set up. So we instantly said, like, he was a god at Halo 5, and I teamed with him for like, a few online tournaments in Halo 5. Uh, it was an easy decision. We was like, we'll run games with Lumi and see how it goes. Instant, like, instantly, it was just a straight connection. Now, last question for you, Looney. Obviously, we're talking about different iterations. You've been around for a long time. You've been around, uh, I mean, historically for years and years and years, especially since I've been in the scene as well. I've seen your face ever and the smile. Um, what, what does it feel like to be able to kind of transition into a new title? You know, obviously, Halo Infinite, very fast-paced, very aggressive, brand new sandbox. We also have the grapple, so many different things to play with. Do you feel like yourself and Warlord have transitioned well into this title? Uh, I think we transitioned slowly but surely. I think that's, that's the best way to put it. I, I like the fast paced, like kind of play style and all that kind of stuff of Halo 5. This is like a good middle ground between like, let's say like Halo 3 and Halo 5. And Stuart loves the Halo 3 kind of stuff. So honestly, I, honestly Stuart adapted better than me. I, I think if you look at the stats at the start of the game, I didn't do that well. But uh, once again, I just listened to Stuart and in game, out of game, he has to listen to me because he's an idiot, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can tell. You're like a little old married couple, aren't you? I can tell you've been together <laughs> yeah, a long time. Yeah, sadly. That's what everyone says. <laughs> uh, I've got to say, Lily, thank you so much for joining us. An exceptional, exceptional series on the back there. Uh, good luck for the rest of the tournament. You've got some big roadblocks ahead of you, but I have no doubt with your confidence and the way that you guys are playing, you'll get over those. So thank you so much for joining us on the desk. Thank you for having me. I'll tell you what, folks, we're going to take a look at the elimination bracket to start with to see where we are at at the end of day two. You can see elimination round four is starting to actually mold itself here. We've got Black Hand waiting, as well as Vex Gaming, who pushed through 3-0 against Diamond Dogs, we just saw on the main stage earlier on. We've got Online Warriors versus Reclaimer happening very soon. We'll find out who'll be in that elimination round four with Vex Gaming. I've got to say, though, Gaskin, it's got to be Online Warriors, right? Surely. Uh, that would be a massive upset from Reclaimer if they managed to take down Online Warriors in the elimination bracket, considering the position they came into. 
I would be very surprised if we see Reclaimer take that series, but at the same time, we have seen some upsets happen already this tournament, but you're right, it would be the biggest of them all. But what we're expecting is a Scorched Hand versus Black Hand. We're expecting a Vexed versus Online Warriors. I would love there to be an upset and, you know, Frostbite or Reclaimer be able to push themselves into top eight and shake things up a little bit, but that's the likelihood just based off performances and what we've seen so far. Yeah, indeed. Onto, you know, we've talk, kind of talked about Black Hand and Scorched as well. Do you feel like that matches up really well? Do you feel like Scorched do have a chance to take down Black Hand while they're kind of down already in the dumps? Uh, I mean, it would be a tough series for them, for sure. And Black Hand will undoubtedly be the favourites. But when you're looking at Black Hand, you've seen how well they've played and we've given them lots of plaudits. Still in the elimination bracket and they've still lost two very close series where they haven't managed to just get over the line. So there's always that hope that the longer the series goes, the more chance you might be able to close out a little bit of an upset there. So I think that's something for them to keep in mind. Never think that you're out of the series, but it's going to be a tough ask. Well, stopping upsets are our winner's bracket. Let's take a look at it and see who has been doing pretty well so far. We've got J-Ling's eSports coming through there. They're in the semis going up against Ascend as well. Ascend have been pretty clean so far in the winner's bracket. We've got Quadrant versus Na'Vi. I'm really excited about this matchup as well as J-Ling's versus Ascend, which actually is going to be our first match tomorrow. Lethal, what do you expect out of this one? You know, Europe's best Ascend historically has been just really not dropping or missing a beat whatsoever. Coming into the land, they're looking pretty fine as well. But J-Links, they're kind of crawling up there, right? You know, they're kind of knocking on the door. The question is, are they going to open it? Are they going to go through it? It's going to be a tough ride. I think it's going to be a very tall order for them. Like, don't get me wrong, if they carried on today, playing, then riding that momentum, stand a smaller amount of a chance. But the problem is, they have a night to sleep. They're going to think about what happened today and then go through what mistakes they made. And I think even uh, Quadios did say as well that they weren't even happy even after that series win. So obviously there's going to be a lot of conversation about what needs to be done to improve. But I can't see it being an overnight success. So I think Ascent should be able to take the one. But I'm not going to lie to you. I'm more looking forward to the other winner semifinals between Na'Vi and Quadros. That's going to be a real testament to see how well Na'Vi played. Because earlier on, that last series with Na'Vi, they played extremely well. That's probably the best series I've seen them play all weekend. Big matches as well, because remember, if you finish top four, that's guaranteed into Orlando funding, all the good stuff. So once you get into that winner's final, you're guaranteed top three. So you're just doing one step better. So this is a chance for these guys to, you know, solidify themselves in the future of this season, as well as performing well at this lap. 100%. We heard Wonderboy say it on the desk actually yesterday that that was something that they've been really keyed in for. They need that Orlando secured, and then the rest is what they're going to be working on here. And obviously, that's going to be that number one spot. All four of those teams are going to be pretty impressive tomorrow. I'm really excited to see those happen in the winner's bracket. But gentlemen, that's going to do it for day number two. Tomorrow we do have Championship Sunday. It's going to be absolutely insane. I hope you guys have enjoyed day two here at Valencia. It's been amazing. It's been pretty hot outside, but even hotter inside because the series have been incredible. Uh, we will see you guys bright and early tomorrow for more action. It will be Championship Sunday, so make sure you're prepared. Don't turn off this dream. Stay on with us, and we'll see you for more HDS EU Regional Finals. The HCS EU Regional is presented by Astro Gaming, AMD, and Zowie.